Good evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight's fireside is related to hurricane season 2020. Living on the coast presents unique challenges during this time of the year. For those of you that have experienced a storm are well aware of the impacts that our local area can and has received over the years. For those who have recently moved into the Myrtle Beach Ward and have never been through a storm, I urge you to heed notice as we are in the midst of hurricane season. Hurricane season runs from June 1 through November 30 each year. As you've already seen, there have been named storms prior to the start of this year's actual season. I hope this is not a sign of what is coming our way. Forecasters predict an active season this year, and I'll discuss that later in my presentation. I am sharing this critical information in partnership with Mr. Thomas Bell of Horry County Emergency Management Division. In a talk given by Elder Stanley G. Ellis of the 70 titled Natural Disasters, he states, the last days will be marked by many calamities and the rise of evil in the world. Against these threats, the Lord and his prophets have given us counsel on how to be righteous and avoid spiritual pitfalls. However, calamities such as tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis seem to strike randomly and devastate the just as well as the unjust. These calamities terrify many of us, but I have learned that we don't have to be afraid of disasters. When we are grounded in the gospel and when we are prepared, we can weather any storm. Hurricanes can be dangerous killers. Learning the warning signals and planning ahead can reduce the chance of injury and major property damage. The United States government, along with state and local governments, offer multiple websites with information and resources for hurricane preparedness. There are various links available to each of you, some of which will be covered by Mr. Bell. The following is a checklist information from the FEMA website to help prepare before and during a hurricane. Before a hurricane. To prepare for a hurricane, you should take the following measures. Make plans to secure your property. Permanent storm shutters offer the best protection for windows. A second option is to board up windows with 5 8 inch marine plywood. Cut to fit and ready to install. Tape does not prevent windows from breaking. Install straps or additional clips to securely fasten the roof of, to the frame of the structure. This will reduce roof damage. Be sure trees and shrubs around your home are well trimmed and maintained. Clear loose and clogged rain gutters and downspouts. Determine how and where to secure your vessel if you own one. Consider building a safe room. During a hurricane, if a hurricane is likely in your area, you should do the following. Listen to the radio or TV for information. Secure your home, close storm shutters, and secure outdoor objects or bring them indoors. Turn off utilities if instructed to do so. Otherwise, turn the refrigerator thermostat to its coldest setting and keep its doors closed. Turn off your propane tank if your house is equipped with one. Avoid using the phone except for serious emergencies. Ensure a supply of water for sanitary purposes, such as cleaning and flushing toilets. Fill the bathtub and other large containers with water. You should evacuate under the following conditions. If you are directed by local authorities to do so, be sure to follow their instructions. Mr. Bell will cover Know Your Zones in our local community so you know what zone that you may be affected and which zones are evacuated during a storm. If you live in a mobile home or temporary structure, such shelters are particularly hazardous during hurricanes, no matter how well fastened to the ground. If you live in a high-rise building, hurricane winds are stronger at higher elevations. If you live on the coast, on a floodplain, near a river, or on an inland waterway, and if you feel you're in danger. If you are unable to evacuate, go to a safe location and or a safe room. If you do not have a safe room, follow the following guidelines. Stay indoors during a hurricane and away from windows and glass doors. Close all interior doors. Secure and brace external doors. Keep curtains and blinds closed. Do not be fooled if there is a lull. It could be the eye of the storm. Winds will pick up again and they will come in a different direction. Lie on the floor under a table or another sturdy object. I cannot stress the importance of not waiting until the last minute 
to prepare for an approaching storm. As the storm approaches and arrives in our local area, there will come a point at which it will be deemed unsafe for first responders to provide assistance to you in your time of need. These decisions are not made lightly. They are made by emergency management officials based on the storm predictions. After a hurricane, recovering from a disaster is usually a gradual process. It can feel slow. It can feel that you're not getting the attention that uh, you need at the time. Safety is a primary issue, as are mental and physical well-being. If assistance is available, knowing how to access it makes it faster and less stressful. Hurricanes can create dangerous situations. Preparation by learning to recognize and respond to warning messages can lessen the damaging effects and reduce the chances of injuries related to a hurricane. Hurricanes are classified through the Saffir Simpson scale and they range from category one through category five. I'm gonna cover each category to give you an idea of what each storm can, can produce. Category one, hurricane force winds, 74 to 95 miles per hour. Category two, 96 through 110 miles per hour winds. Category three starts your classification of a major hurricane, 111 through 129 miles per hour. Category four, 130 through 156 miles per hour. Category five, any winds over 157 miles per hour. In a category one storm, very dangerous winds will produce some damage. Well-constructed frame homes could have damage to roof, shingles, siding, and gutters. Large branches of trees will snap and shallowly rooted trees may topple over. Extensive damage to power lines and poles will likely result in power outages that could last a few to several days. Category two, extremely dangerous winds will cause extensive damage. Well-constructed frame homes could sustain major roof damage and siding damage. Many shallowly rooted trees will be snapped or uprooted and block numerous roads. Near total power loss is expected with outages that could last from several days to weeks. Category three, devastating damage may occur. Well-built frame homes may incur major damage or removal of roof, decking, and gable ends. Many trees will be snapped and uprooted, blocking numerous roads. Electricity and water will be unavailable for several days to weeks after the storm passes. Category four, catastrophic damage can occur. Well-built frame homes can sustain severe damage with loss of most of the roof structure and or some exterior walls. Most trees will be snapped or uprooted and power poles downed. Fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas. Power outages can range weeks into months. Most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. Category five, catastrophic damage once again. A high percentage of frame homes will be destroyed with total roof failure and wall collapse. Fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas. Power outages will last weeks to possibly months. Most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. So for the new folks uh, to the Myrtle Beach Ward and to the local area, I'll pull some statistics to give you an idea of what we're up against. So the ratio between tropical storm and hurricanes in our local area along the Grand Strand are as follows. Tropical storms, 44, which is 57.89%, to hurricanes at 32, 42.11%. As you can see, tropical storms are more prevalent. Don't be fooled by a tropical storm. Just because it's not considered a hurricane, tropical storms can still produce damaging effects such as flooding, inland flooding, especially if you live mid to south of Myrtle Beach near in the Sacasi area and areas south where the Waccamaw River runs uh, along the banks. How often Myrtle Beach gets affected? Myrtle Beach is brushed or hit directly every 1.94 years. Average mile, miles per hour winds in the Myrtle Beach area. 
is 97 miles per hour. Statistically, when Myrtle Beach should be affected next, before the end of 2021. This is just a statistical average and does not mean that the area will not be affected this particular year. The last storm was in 2019 on September 5th. It was Hurricane Dorian. Hurricane Dorian passed at the closest approach 41 miles to the southeast and remained off the coast. It was moving northeast. It packed 100 mile an hour winds. The local area had gusts up to 70 miles per hour with 10 and a half inches of rain. The projected hurricane season for 2020 is predicted to be an active season. An above normal 2020 Atlantic season is expected, according to forecasters with NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, a division of the National Weather Service. The outlook predicts a 60% chance of an above normal season, a 30% chance of a near normal season, and only a 10% chance of a below normal season. This year, forecasters are predicting the following. Named storms, 13 to 19. Hurricanes, 6 to 10. Major hurricanes, 3 to 6. And this is the Atlantic Hurricane Basin. As with every hurricane season, the need to be prepared is critically important this time of year. Social distancing and other CDC guidance to keep you safe from COVID-19 may impact the disaster preparedness plan that you had in place prior, including what is in your go kit, evacuation routes, shelters, and more. Natural disasters do not wait, so I encourage you to keep COVID-19 in mind when revising or making new plans for you and your loved ones, and don't forget your pets. Some important information to jot down. I'll give you just a few minutes to grab something to write with and something to write on. These are very important numbers. Um, I highly encourage you to uh, jot these down, keep them handy as we are in hurricane season. And if a storm is approaching, uh, these are very critical numbers that can help you. The first one is Horry County Emergency Management Division. Their number is 843-915-5150. American Red Cross for shelters, 843 843- Four seven seven zero zero two zero. South Carolina Department of Transportation, eight 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 seven seven nine one five one. For traffic and road conditions, there are online apps that you can download to your smartphone and/or tablet or computer where you can monitor evacuation routes. For reentry information, reentry is is critical to our local area. Because if you're in a mandatory evacuation zone and you're asked to leave your residence, you have to provide proof of residency in order to be allowed back in following the storm. If you do not have proof of residency, you will be turned away. Even though it's your property, um, if you can't prove that you live there, the first responders and local authorities are not going to let you back in the affected area. So reentry information is as follows. 866 866- Two four six zero one three three. In closing, if you need any assistance with preparing for an approaching storm, I encourage you to contact your ministering brothers and sisters, as well as the Elders Quorum and Relief Society presidencies, as they are all excellent resources to help you prepare for an approaching storm and pending storm. I hope these tips and information will help each of you to prepare properly. Please do not wait until the last minute to prepare. The time is now. Please keep in mind that each storm is different. Just because the last storm wasn't that bad doesn't mean the next one will be the same. In a quote from the National Hurricane Center, they tell us that history teaches that a lack of hurricane preparedness and awareness are common threads among all major hurricane disasters. By knowing your vulnerability and what actions you should take, you can reduce the effects of a hurricane disaster. I hope these tips and and information will will greatly assist you in preparing for hurricane season 2020 uh, along the Grand Strand area for the Myrtle Beach Ward members. 
I'll leave this with you in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.